So this is the brake booster uh, off my 83944. Seems to be an original part. Uh, it's the Girling, which I think came on most, if not all, of the early cars, and I think maybe 924s, I'm not really sure. Uh, I've already taken loose the front plate, and I'll go over that in a second. Just a little bit of history. So the reason this is off the car is because my brakes sucked, and uh, I put a Mighty Vac through this uh, vacuum port here, and uh, did a few tests, and it was leaking, so I replaced it. Uh, I'm not sure of any rebuild kits out there, at least I couldn't find any when I searched it for uh, these brake boosters. And for the price of a, a new one, it doesn't really make sense in my opinion, something critical like brakes. But anyway, just for educational purposes, I decided to tear it down. This is the master cylinder that was attached to it. And this was also an original part. You see the 83 stamp there. Again, it's a girling part. Uh, Porsche paired girling with girling and ATE with ATE. I think uh, the name actually was Tevez, Tevez or something, T-E-V-E-S. Uh, instead of ATE, but it's ATE is the brand that you can at least uh, find it by today. So when I took the master apart, just a little bit of a preface here, preface, preface. Uh, I didn't really find anything wrong visually with the seals, just kind of inspecting them. Uh, took everything apart. I mean, sure, they're not new, but they're they're appliant. I didn't find any tears, so uh, that leads me to believe that the brake booster was probably the original problem here. Yeah, this seal, if it wasn't original, it's at least 10, maybe 20 years old, if this ever was rebuilt or anything like that. So, going further, so the way that I took this apart, and uh, I can't see a reason for anyone else to do this unless they also just wanted to see what was inside it. Like I said, there's not, not a rebuild kit. Uh, there's these little dimples around the edge that are kind of just uh, crimped down. You can just take a big flat blade like this and just pry them all up. After you get about two-thirds of them off, the whole thing will kind of push out dramatically as there is a big spring in here. So just kind of have your wits about you if you decide to do this. It will kind of suddenly lurch out. So once that's loose, oh, and this grommet, hard as a rock, um, it's still sealed, but seen better days. So the front plate comes off. Plenty of paint missing from years of uh, brake fluid getting by it. And that's the first thing I saw. So, this master wasn't leaking, at least to my knowledge, before I took it apart. And uh, I replaced it with a new part as well, um, obviously a new brake booster. But uh, there must have been a, a really slow leak, or maybe uh, it was rebuilt at one point, and this was from before it was rebuilt. I'm not really sure. I've had the car for about four years. So, uh, that's pretty damning. You can see corrosion got in there. Uh, brake fluid is hydroscopic, so it does absorb water out of the air. So. There's the front plate. You can see the rust continues. That's where the, the rusty part of that met this. So when you open it up, the next thing you see is this kind of, uh, I, guess, I don't know what you call it, like a reaction plate or something. Obviously it meets up against that. You can see where it did. And uh, there's spring pressure between this front plate here and uh, this diaphragm. So obviously the front plate being crimped to this back plate, and this back plate being bolted to the car through, there's kind of an intermediate uh, spacer adapter or something that adapts it to the 944's firewall bolt pattern. So this remains stationary just because uh, it's fixed to the firewall through a variety of uh, connections. And then that means this diaphragm, and it looks like it's part of the back plate, but it's really not. There's a thin rubber band that uh, goes all the way around it. It's pretty soft after all these years and uh, this actually this whole thing can move relative to the chassis of the brake booster so I can't do it with two hands but if I go like that you can kind of see so this metal plate is actually just connected by this rubber and maybe uh, whatever's behind it I'm not really sure yet so through this plate up here we have these two studs that go through to the back and if you ever taken one of these off you know there's four studs that come out the back here, not two. Reason for that is um, these studs go all the way through and so when I pulled the front cover off I relieved the spring of its compression so these actually go all the way through like that. So when I pop these bolts loose, or sorry nuts loose, they look like they're some sort of lock nut. I'm gonna go ahead and just put some uh, 
M8 nuts on the back here to kind of hold these steady and fixed uh, so I can get them loose properly. So uh, once that's off, we'll touch base again. All right, so I got one of them off here. Looks like some sort of a serrated lock nut. Once it was loose, it came off pretty easily. So this is the stud. I took the nut off the back, kind of go through. Kind of reminds me of a like a slider pin on a caliper. So, and these have a key on them. Kind of hard to see it there. But if you look at the uh, so kind of a keyway there, and uh, that would line up to that to keep these. So you can tighten these bolts into your uh, intermediate spacer thing, I guess. So there's one side, and uh, kind of pull it out as much as I can, but it feels like it's catching on something. So uh, I'll just keep on taking it apart. All right, so that's off. So. When I cracked loose the nuts and kind of just walked them off, this popped out pretty violently. So that's the actual uncompressed length of the spring there. So there's probably... I mean, that's the kind of uh, force that your vacuum is resisting. Anyway, so the next order of business, as these won't come out and it doesn't really matter at this point, is this center section here or whatever I guess uh, there's probably some seals back there I'm not really sure also these two holes here through the diaphragm uh, I'm not really clear on what they're doing obviously the vacuum is applied uh, through the grommet there and there, this part is under engine vacuum so these would be transmitting vacuum to somewhere I'm not really sure uh, I'm just gonna take it apart and see but so far uh, from besides the cover, everything's looking okay so far. I haven't really uh, inspected this rubber diaphragm outer kind of thing yet, but uh, we'll get there. So my idea for taking this off, because I, I know nothing about brake boosters except for the very basics. I can't see a clear way except uh, it looks like there's these tabs that stick up and maybe this rotates on, kind of like a twist lock kind of thing. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just hit it with a hammer. I'll see where that gets me. So I hammered around on this, these three little tabs coming out here on this uh, kind of top plate spinner thing and it didn't loosen or tighten. So I got the impression just by looking at it and watching it spin around that this is probably more of like a calibration thing from the factory when they made it and uh, Kind of like on a salt shaker, you can control how much comes out. You can just spin that around to, uh, you know, open up more air volume between uh, the two halves here. So that didn't get me anywhere. But uh, I took this bellow off the back, which uh, just is held on by its own elasticity. This just slides on. And I saw that this uh, cylinder here moves with the diaphragm. So if I were to push that through, the whole diaphragm moves through. So uh, I got to pushing on that, and let me see if uh, I can do this again. Push it out like that, I can, uh, there we go. Move this all the way out. And uh, this seems like it's still held on via these two studs uh, from before we knew that these went all the way through to the back, and now that this is pushed past it, there's there's got to be some sort of like uh, lip or something holding these into place. But uh, I'm going to see if I can just pull this rubber back. Maybe this rubber can just be shoved through. And once I get that apart, then I'm pretty sure that I can just remove this diaphragm plate from the rubber diaphragm itself. And then I uh, can take a good hard look at the diaphragm. But while I'm in here, actually this is my first time truly looking at it, I'm just going take to a, take a look around at the diaphragm itself to see if maybe there's anything like a blatant tear. I, I doubt it. It wasn't leaking very much, but it was leaking. So you can see there's some clear... This looks like it could be cleaned off. It's just uh, rust, the same kind of thing that we saw inside that cover. This is the bottom of it here where it would have dripped down. Here's those holes that I was talking about. There's a little bit of grease if you look up. So those holes just went straight through. There didn't seem to be something on the back side of it to, to meet it. So everything so far looks pretty solid. 
Not that I would know if there was a small tear or something. This is what it looks like all the way around. There's the uh, little hole on that side. And uh, yeah, so if I go down, I can stick a finger in there. That seems like it goes to the back side. On the back side, this cylinder, remember, used to come up there. This just looks like a like a seal, and there's some grease inside it. Kind of reminds me of just like an ordinary radial seal you'd find a uh, wheel bearing, uh, crankshaft main seal, or something like that. Uh, just kind of grips around whatever's going through it. So I'm going to go ahead and try and get these studs out one way or another, and then uh, go from there. Alright, here's the money shot. That's what it looks like. So all I had to do, it turned out, was push the uh, base of these. You can kind of see the, the lip there. Using just a, a flathead screwdriver, push them through these cutouts, both of them, and then this slid right off. So here's what it looks like. So you first have this uh, tip here, and I think there's still going to be uh, something I have to do to get this apart. I might go back to hammering on it. I'm not honestly sure uh, what to do with that, but uh, I'll cut it if I have to. Uh, we'll just see. And there's the back. So any sort of control valves, like a one-way or proportioning valve, I don't know. Uh, I've heard that there's kind of like a midway through the stroke, it kind of changes the vacuum force applied. That's got to be inside here. This is not a solid connection, obviously to the back here where the, of course, the pedal uh, lever would push against. So something's inside here, and uh, it's not, uh, I don't know, we'll find out. Meanwhile over here, here's a look at the diaphragm from the inside. So on the back of these studs you have nuts, and uh, there's plenty of this grease all around. And I, I kind of saw that in a few places around here. So there was some sort of, I don't know if it was assembly lube or just general lube that they used when they put this together to keep everything sealing. It's around uh, a lot of the rubber to metal interfaces. Of course, there's some on this, this back seal here. But as far as this half of it, at this point, all it is is uh, a metal shell with a seal on that end, which you could replace pretty easily. There's some pockets in it for grease. And you have the diaphragm with the studs going through it. And this, this rubber is all, seems like it's all made as one piece. So I will pull the diaphragm out and uh, just look at it just because, I mean, it's not going back in the car or anything, so who cares? But let me try and get this apart. So after hitting this for another five minutes like a caveman, like I was doing earlier, even after I already determined it wasn't doing anything, uh, I finally realized that this is probably held in mainly by, there's these four little uh, bubble things coming out, I don't know what you want to call them, and uh, if you look at the back, it looks like they were just kind of crimped over this. So I think the way to get this apart is going to be to just push those out similar to how we pushed out the front cover. All right, so after just hammering these in kind of with a flat head from every angle, this top part popped off and I kind of used a screwdriver uh, and I, yeah, you can see where I used a screwdriver. Uh, once it got sufficiently loose, just kind of put it between these two and popped it out. It uh, just flew off and uh, here you can clearly see there's these two ports that look like they go to atmosphere, looking through uh, the back. So, actually they're opposite. So, there's these two ports here, and then on the back, there are these two ports here. Kind of hard to see. So, um, wherever they go, there's two ports. And finally, there's a circlip, which is a thing that I actually know how to remove uh, the first time. So, between these two, so here is that little uh, extender push rod thing. Inside is a little rubber, probably just like a damper or something, a little rubber button that moves with these. So those go together. 
And then there was this, uh, I don't know, some sort of thrust washer or something. That went inside there like that. So that went like that. And then you had the main push rod, which seems like it's solidly joined with what actually goes to your pedal. So without further ado, keep going. All right, so the snap rings out, easy enough. Uh, you can't like directly pull it out from the side, so you just kind of unseat it and then just give a f nice firm smack to this end and it just kind of flies out, watch your eyes. Next thing, uh, I had to really bash in these little indentations here because I think the next thing is gonna be for this to slide out this way. So I did pull this back rod out um, oh, and there's a seal. I, I just now saw that actually. That must have gone. It's a good question, actually. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I've been hammering at this like a caveman for the last five minutes. All these four little tabs trying to get it loose, and it's about to come out, but uh, just keeps on hanging up on something. The metal has gotten pretty beat up, so I'm, I'm sure that. On some of them, I've actually probably punctured the metal with my flathead just from that side. So, uh, see when we get it out. Alright, so this part is loose. To take it out, I really had to hammer pretty heavily on these tabs here. So, uh, I wouldn't count on those being able to uh, just flex back into shape. But on this part, uh, immediately there's a rubber o-ring that uh, seals around this outer lip here and then uh, obviously the circle lips off I'll see if I can push this through it's a negative and we'll uh, keep trying stuff so this little metal ring on the back pops off with a flat head it's just kind of interference fit so we'll put that in the File over there, and then snap rings already out. Uh, there's our whatever isolator, some sort of cotton or some material like that. Plenty of rust and grease on it. So, let's see if we can slide this out. So, this is the main shaft. Remember, this buttered up against. Let's see where was it? The. Uh, the diaphragm little push rod thing. So what it looks like is this metal ring here is kind of hard to see from all the dirt and uh, lint on it. This is uh, machined as part of this push rod. There's a spring here with a cup. And this cup has a rubber seal, still pliable. And then up here you can see the groove where the snap ring went. So when I go like this, Kind of hard to tell but this does slide down so if this is some sort of valve then uh, I, I can't really see it being one it really just seems like I can move that back and forth it's just a seal that uh, can move you know this this would be held fixed inside a well inside this and this moves with the diaphragm so I'm not really sure honestly maybe just to always maintain sealing as the push rod moves is probably my best guess. But uh, I don't, I'm not seeing any evidence of a check valve or any sort of uh, variable valve. This part is solid plastic. Yeah, just no seal or anything inside it. Just one piece. So that's that. Oh, there's like a little bit of a rubber, rubber thing or plastic, I'm not sure, around the seal. So yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be a check valve or anything inside here. Maybe this part, like, no. Anyway, so that's the main shaft. The last phase of this will be uh, prying the diaphragm off of this and just seeing what it looks like. It's probably just gonna be brute force. It's probably glued on, but uh, see what happens. All right, I was wrong about it being glued on. Once I kind of got a flat blade under it on one side here, I realized that it, just peel it off. There's a little ridge here around the edge. 
that uh, mates up with this. Seems like it can just kind of clean, work its way off all the way around. See, there's it's kind of catching on these little dimples that we pried back originally. This is the, the really rusty area down here at the bottom we're getting to. It's not one to come off. We'll start from this side. Ah, there we go. All right, so here's the back. Here's the other two studs, it looks like. Oh, well, there's that. Um, that would go through to your intermediate adapter slash spacer. Of course, the other two are right here on the diaphragm. And uh, I don't see any apparent damage, but I haven't really looked at it closely yet. Maybe there is uh, something I'm missing. I'll, I'll look over you know, the diaphragm closely. But 1983 seems to actually be an okay shape. Anyway, this little thing is right here. 8081. Hmm. Someone could explain that to me. I'd be interested, actually. So, actually, well, looks like it was maybe one, two, three, four, five. May '83. I'm not sure. Production date, maybe they made this from '80, '80 80 to '84, and maybe that signifies. Uh, I don't know. You tell me. But uh. Yeah, so that's about it. There's the diaphragm. There's the back plate. There's everything else. So a quick debrief, I guess, on this. Can this be rebuilt? Eh, if you really wanted to, I guess. Uh, you'd be replacing the seal. You'd be hopefully replacing the diaphragm. After that, uh, that's in. You'd have this piece here, which uh, got pretty chewed up as I removed it. You'd have the seal on here to replace. Probably not a big deal. And then after that, uh, well, this got pretty boogered up as I tried to remove it, but then again, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. But uh, I think the most damning thing is probably these tabs here, but I had to hammer back pretty dramatically just to remove everything. If you were just leaving uh, this piece in place on there with this on it, you'd probably be okay up to that point. Uh, there's only, I thought there were gonna be more seals inside here, but it was really only this one, which kind of surprised me. And this seal, I mean, pretty good health. 83, car at 160 something thousand miles on it. So after that, uh, just other, you know, nuts and bolts pretty much. And then the main cover here, all these dimples around the edge, you'd have to crimp back on. Now luckily, the nature of the diaphragm is when this goes back on, it has this lip that folds over here like that. So when you put the front cover back on, as long as you crimp it pretty well, I think you'd be okay with just, uh, you know, it's gonna just kind of create a seal. You won't have to worry about sealant or anything like that but that's how it goes together, and that's what's inside it. So, rebuild, for me, hard pass. Not really not really worth it for the price of a new one, knowing, uh, like I said earlier, something like your braking system, you really wanna go through the bother. I'm sure you could find the parts from, a, I think an E30 brake booster is, is very similar. I know that they use 944 brake boosters as a swap part, so I'm sure you could maybe, if you really wanted to, find parts like this. You could probably find these seals from, uh, uh, you know, similar era brake boosters from this manufacturer, but it just it doesn't seem like it's really worth it to me. I couldn't see a way to put these back to how they were and securely grab that uh, that plastic part. It's kind of just beat up. So, anyway, just, uh, there you go, inside of a 944 brake booster.